Hi, my name is Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to the Digital Art Series here on PSD Touch Plus. Today we are going to talk a little bit about how to organize your files and how to showcase your files and also how to learn from other digital artists when you find images on the internet. Also, I will show you a couple of ways to collect references before you start an actual digital art project. So let's get started. First of all, I have an image here. Um, this is uh, the process of painting that I did uh, a couple of years ago. And you can see that when I zoom out, you can see the whole process from the left to the right, all the steps that I did for this painting. And I have it in one image file. Now, this is quite useful when you want to show the whole process and how you uh, worked on an image uh, for others. But you can also find lots of uh, examples like this on the internet from other digital artists. And I highly recommend to collect these um, process images, download them, and then if it's in one image, you, you need to cut them and um, just to store them in a proper uh, format which will help you to see what happened from one stage to the other because by just looking at it like this is also useful but it's even better to see it one after the other so like a little slideshow and that's what I'm going to show you how to do this and if you want to practice this you can use this same image I'm going to provide the link from DeviantArt you can download this process uh, image uh, of this painting. So first of all what I would like to do is to start from the right and I'm going to create new layers. So I'm showing the layers panel here on the right and I'm zoom, I will zoom closer and I'm going to make a selection. So I'm using the rectangular marquee tool and I'm making a selection. It's good to know when you are making a selection with these shape selection tools, you can actually hold down space to move the selection around. That's quite useful to know. And now I have it on the image where I need it. And now I'm going to press command J, which is which will make a new layer, it duplicate, uh, the, duplicates the layer uh, based on the selection. It's called layer via copy and it's here under the layer menu, layer, new layer via copy. It's a really useful option. So now I have this layer on a, or this image on a separate layer and because I know that the canvas size ha uh, is the same on all the uh, steps I'm going to use the same rectangle and I'm going to control or command on Mac, click on the thumbnail image of that new layer and then I can drag this selection on the next image and I press command J but I make sure that the layer one is selected where I have all the other images. So I'm going to do the same thing again and again, A command click on the thumbnail, drag it to the left and then select the layer where I have all the images and command J or control J on PC to create a new layer, layer via copy. So I'm doing the same thing again, command J and <clears throat> you can actually, once you have, in this case I have four images already, I can command click on the first one and then I can use command shift click to select another one and I can move the two selections together. The only problem with that is that you will still have it in one uh, layer once you, once you create a new layer. So you can add to your selection based on a thumbnail, command and shift clicking on the thumbnails. That's quite useful to know. You can also use command alt to remove one from the selection. But in this case I'm going to do it one by one so I'm going to use this and I just drag it to the left, zoom closer. This is the next one that I need to uh, extract and I'm going to continue doing it. Obvi obviously I have all these images separately on my computer. I just wanted to show you how to do this after you uh, or if you download these images from the internet from someone else. 
so you can do it uh, with any images any references and I think that's the last one on the left now there's two more and um, I won't use this second step I'm going to use the first one here and I'm probably going to create a layer like that okay now I can delete all the other layers and I can keep these layers and with the first one let me just put it on top of the other one because here I don't have enough space and I set the opacity just to see I set the opacity to 50% just to see the size uh, and match it together the two layers and now I'm going to create another new layer command click on the layer on the bottom fill this layer with white and then merge these together but first I set it back to 100% okay so now I have the same size on this one as well roughly the same size okay now the only thing I need to do is to change the order of the layers so I would like to have the first one on the top and the last stage at the bottom so I'm going to select all the layers I go to the layer menu arrange and choose a reverse that's quite useful so as you can see now is the opposite uh, order so I have the first stage on the top and what I'm going to do is still have them all selected and choose these align options I align them to the left and then to the top so now all the layers are here on the left I just zoom closer and you will see if I turn off the layers we will see the stages and how the image changes one by one or step by step okay so it's good but I also would like to have a crop because now the all the other parts of the image is unnecessary so I just command click on one of the thumbnails and I go to image crop I have the crop nicely and now all I need to do is to save these layers into separate files so I'm going to file export I'm sorry script and choose export layers to files okay so let's go to file scripts export layers to files I'm going to choose JPEG as the format I'm going to save them onto my desktop and let's just call them yeah thumb is fine and then run this script so what Photoshop is doing now is saving all these layers one by one and it will call them thumb one two three four five six seven ten and the export layers to files was successful so now if I go to bridge and I go to my desktop I can find these images and I can easily uh, just have a preview by pressing space and then use the right and left arrows to go forward and backwards okay and believe me this is the best way to see uh, and to learn what happened in the process it's much better than actually learning from a book or, or to see the same uh, images one by one in a book because you always need to compare okay what 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 is the difference on the previous and the next stage it's quite hard to tell it's the best when you have the same size images um, and and you can just simply press right left right left to see before and after so you have a really good uh, view of what ch what uh, what's the difference between the two stages so for example here you can see uh, when I worked on the background I also realized that her head is too big she's she's like leaning forward and uh, I wanted to keep her straight so I changed the whole uh, proportions on the head and then I also included the hand which might be a bit too small especially with all the details and the light uh, the last stage it looks a bit small but uh, that's uh, something 
which uh, can be easily adjusted later on. So you can see that these stages now are really easy to see. So we can easily follow the whole painting process going back and forth. And uh, that's what I recommend when you want to uh, show your process or if you want to learn from someone else and you find all the process, maybe it's only just like two or three steps or 10 or even more, download it and do the same thing what I did here or if you can download it in separate images files, image files then even better you have that's less work to do but uh, definitely it will help you to learn a lot by, by just simply uh, concentrating on the differences between stages so that can help a lot uh, when you want to study and to learn from other digital artists or even to see your own uh, painting process you can learn a lot from that as well okay and I would like to while we are here in bridge I would like to also show you another great thing and this is if I go to let's say I go to this stage and then I go to the next stage okay and I press so I selected those two images command clicking on them or control on PC and then command B uh, which is the review mode you can find it also under the view menu in bridge it's here called review mode okay so if you select that one you can see the two images side by side which is again a really useful thing okay sometimes it's good to see side by side so the two stages at the same time it can even be the very first and the very last stages side by side which is again interesting so it's like comparing uh, details but let me just choose this two, these two images, for example, or maybe, yeah, let's just choose, choose these two images. And here you can see the draft of the colors, uh, and then on the right, a little bit more detailed uh, illustration. And if you want to concentrate on a specific area, let's say on the eye, you can click here in bridge, you can click on the eye to zoom onto the eye and you can do the same on the other image and then you can um, you can look specifically on uh, some parts of, of the image and if you move this loop tool or magnifying glass you can move it separately on the right and left or if you hold down control or command you can move it together so now we can focus on the lips okay or maybe here on the shoulder just to see these details and see the difference if you have uh, darker or and brighter details it already shows depth and uh, three-dimensional forms okay so the loop tool is also useful if you if you are in the review mode and in the review mode you can have more uh, images selected not just two so we can have for example four five six as as much as you want and um, it's a really useful technique so again you can still use the magnifying glass or the loop tool okay so that's in uh, in bridge uh, one of the most useful things when you want to compare images and um, there are so many useful things in bridge so i highly recommend to use it and it comes with photoshop so once you have photoshop installed on your computer you, you will already have these options the review mode is only available since cs4 but bridge is available since cs2 uh, with photoshop okay and if you are in photoshop and you don't know how to get to bridge it's this button here on the top launch bridge or you can also go to file browse in bridge okay so um, these after these options I would like to just uh, last but not least show you um, a couple of ways to collect some references before you start a digital art project and for that I use two websites one of them is uh, DeviantArt where I have a profile it's free to create a profile if you pay a bit uh, for your profile you can uh, have uh, more options which is actually really good and one of the free options is to organize favorites these are images on the DeviantArt community and um, you can search there are many many images here millions of great digital artwork and not as great as well but uh, once you find the images that that are relevant to you you can categorize them into favorites so for example for dragons 
I have a collection uh, of dragons and I can also see this in a full view so I can see uh, this collection of images okay so this is how DeviantArt works and then there is another website uh, called Pinterest which is another really interesting one also free and here you can create boards pin boards where you can save images from the whole internet so it's not restricted to DeviantArt here you can save any sources and collect them into one page and as you can see here uh, that's one of my tutorials a uh, references for one of my tutorials and once I have all these images together whenever I need to uh, just look onto one of the references I just need to click on it and then I can see it and I can go back to the others by clicking on the board again and so on and so forth so this is a really useful website and I'm highly recommend to create um, a profile here and you can again find lots of inspirational stuff here because here whenever you search for images you will only find images or Pinterest will only show you images that are recommended by other users so it's not all the internet um, images like if you search on Google you will find lots of unnecessary things here on Pinterest you will all already find uh, recommended images so recommended images by other users so that's a really useful thing as well okay and I think that's all what I wanted to show you today and uh, I promise in the next tutorial we will uh, continue uh, or get back to painting um, tutorials I just thought that it might be useful for you to know about these uh, these less about painting but more about the techniques behind uh, digital painting whenever you study or uh, prepare for a digital digital art project okay so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will join me next time as well